I've got a warm up exercise for you. Ready? Put it. Oh, put it. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Can Siege put it? Maybe put it bigger because Siege can't read. One sock cutter. He cut socks. Two sock cutters. They cut socks. Three cocks. Oh. One cock. One cocks. One sock cutter. He cut socks. Two sock cutters. <laughs> they cut. Sock. All right. Co- All right. Go first, Emma. Me? No, okay. I'm not doing this. All right. This. One sock cutter, he cut <laughs> socks. Two sock cutters, they You're cut gonna... socks. Three sock Wait, cutters, single? they cut socks. <laughs> Set faster. <laughs> no way. Because I'll be saying, cock sucker, cock sucker, cock sucker. <laughs> <laughs> you bloody cock sucker. <laughs> <laughs> and all I'll be saying, <laughs> three socks, cock sucker, the forks. <laughs> <laughs> Four cock suckers. Go, Steve. Give it a go. <laughs> Do it as fast as you can. One cocksucker, two cocksucker, three <laughs> cocksucker. <laughs> CJ, CJ just got to the cocksuckers. <laughs> he I ain't, cu- into a I ain't song. cutting socks. <laughs> he made it into a I song. ain't cutting socks. <laughs> I ain't cutting socks. Socks are expensive. <laughs> CJ's like, one, <laughs> one cocksucker, two cocksuckers, three cocksuckers, four. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back to the Bisa Word Podcast. I am Devin and I'm here with Emma. Hello. I'm here with CJ. Hello. And I'm here with Alexander. Ahoy. Um, this afternoon, I went for my weekly uh, massage. Mr. Bates. Masturbation. Because, um, you know, my body... Did you go? Over, ...is overworked and... Right? Anyways, um, when I got out of the car, when you enter the shopping center, there's a corridor in this specific um, entrance. And um, they seem to be water leaking from the roof. And I was it like... Was it raining? No. Well, that's the thing, right? So, it was leaking from the roof, but this, I was on the bottom is this, floor. Is this a building I have worked on? No. Um, okay, so it's not me. And apparently, <laughs> one of the hydrants pipes burst, right? Oh. And because I was talking to the cleanup, uh, the cleaner there, and um, so the entrance was blocked. So when I was leaving to go to the other entrance, the person was another person was coming into the entrance, and I said, "Oh, you can't come in. You can't go in there. It's raining." So me describing <laughs> what was happening in the corridor. Wasn't that was a leaky roof? I said it's raining, and as soon as I said that, I just kept walking. I was like, "It's not raining," because it's I'm on the bottom floor, and it's I. This is the way I described what was happening from leaky pipes. I said it's raining, and what the thoughts, did they do? He 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 did not believe me because he's like, "What?" And then he he went in, and then he he saw the water coming down. And he said. It is raining. So he followed. He He's like, oh, it is raining. I was like, yeah, it's not raining, but that's how I it describe things. It reminds me of like when you drive in to a dead-end car park and there's no space, so you U-turn, and then you see someone else coming in, and it's just like, hmm, shall I tell them? <laughs> we'll just let them do exactly what I did. <laughs> but do you... Do you um, Give visual descriptions to people, like when, when, like. Oh, because did you say it's raining? No, no, <laughs> that's no, not physical description. Uh, okay, I'm talking visual. about visual descriptions. Ernest, Ernest, with the, yeah. Ernest, afterwards, when you said it's raining, did you say men? It's raining, men. <laughs> should have. I should have. Hallelujah. <laughs> that is visual description. It's raining, men. But no, isn't like if I told you the corridor was raining, would you get that or not? No. I'd be like, no, it's not raining. It's no. just, it's I, sunny. I, 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 I <laughs> you, think you're on drugs. <laughs> but then when you saw it leaking, I know you, what you meant, but yeah, I'd still thought you said the wrong word. <laughs> yeah, I, I would obviously know what you meant, but I would think you're an idiot. Really? I'd, I think you probably I think, think that was you're perfect. I'd, I'd be like, but why, why did he say raining? That's what. I'd, <laughs> <laughs> because I think I'd probably keep going because I'd be. I'd be a bit confused as to what you meant. Well, like, he did. He yeah. kept going. Because I said it to two people. That's the thing. Two different people. That it was I said, raining. It's raining. So Hold on. the first time Hold you on. said it, you didn't think of it better I thought it was word. very good. Actually, when I'd said it in my in my head, I was like, that was genius. So I decided to say it again. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's happened. Hold on. <laughs> okay. You didn't fuck up once. You fucked up twice. Yes, twice. Because I said, actually. So the word leaking didn't come to mind. 
No, because like the first Water time, leak. the first time this uh, Asian lady came up to me, I didn't even say you can't enter. I just waved my hands at her and I said, it's raining, right? And then another a couple came and I said, oh, you can't go in there because it's raining. And I was like, because <laughs> oh, I thought the first time it was a genius. So I said, let's use it again. Let's see how far I can take this. So, yeah. so I just, just want to be when, doubly when, sure. When... <laughs> uh, you walked through this situation. Someone was walking towards it, and you thought waving your hands and saying "It's raining" was like the perfect <laughs> yes. explanation. Yes, because I've played it in my head, and I was like, "I'm like, I'm all about efficiency. I okay, get least amount of words, actions. It's raining. <laughs> perfect, <laughs> perfect. She gets exactly okay. what I'm talking about. There's no context, but it's raining. No entry. <laughs> so did the girl get you? No, she had to look as a girl. Oh. They, they both it's went right, and looked. Yeah. <laughs> they both of them did. So I didn't achieve anything. I feel like that's natural. I actually do because I feel like if someone said it to me, I'd still want to see what they were talking about rather than just trust their words. Of course, because what why. they're talking about didn't make sense. Maybe because um. it's just I'm so used to trying to create intrigue that my sentences are intriguing all the time. Oh. What do you reckon? Maybe. It's raining. No, I... I just thought that was idiotic. <laughs> Anyways, so after this moment, I went to the other entrance and I just realized I hate people that don't sweat. And I want I want to meet them. Wait, so after you went into the other entrance? Other entrance. I walked in and I was walking into towards the massage. Yeah. Uh, epiphany hit me. And I hate people that don't sweat. I don't hate them. What? I envy them. Oh, sorry. So, see, again, what? raining and hate is the same thing. So, <laughs> envy is the word I'm using, uh, looking for, not hate. Yes, I, I would love them. not to sweat. Hold on, hold on. Why did Epiphany hit you? What did you do to her? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, I, I, I don't, I, like, since lockdown, I didn't, I didn't notice that I was sweating, right? But as soon as I go into a public space, I guess I'm just like more aware of myself. And uh, I started to sweat and I was like, man, who doesn't sweat? What what people don't sweat? Not to be the fact checker, but I just want to make sure again, this was sweat, not rain from the (laughs) previous corridor. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was, uh, it was sweat. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah so um uh are you guys sweaters <laughs> so yeah it's, it's coming oh, yeah. off it's coming off not jumpers people that you oh know, god <laughs> people I've, that sweat uh, i've realized there's a direct correlation between how out of shape i am and how much i sweat <laughs> yes yeah yeah it sucks i sweat a lot so, are you saying when you're at your yeah. fittest, you don't sweat? Not no. in the same way as when I'm not as much. Like for w- what I mean, like when I'm when I'm fit, if I go and do intense exercise, yeah, I'll, I'll sweat. Like yeah. if I play back, like, I'll get drenched. But I sweat now doing things that I never used to sweat doing. Right. Like walking. Like walking to the door. <laughs> <laughs> what I never used to break a sweat walking ever. Doing a poo. Have I, have I just given you like? <laughs> yeah. Have I just given you the worst information ever? Um, no, because because yeah. uh, you know there's a solution, but you don't want to. Because I know people that are unfit that don't sweat. Yeah, some people. I I can't even remember who it was, but I've met someone that actually doesn't even when exercising barely. Not a drip of Did, sweat. Did they're not exercising hard enough? Maybe that that's just more unusual. But for me, I take tablets not to sweat, and like I I wish I could take more, but I don't want to get side effects. I I know some people that um don't wear deodorant because they don't sweat. Yeah. If only. Do you know Do you know who they are? They're the stinky person on the train. But they don't. That's who it is. They don't stink. They do sweat <laughs> in their head. It's in or well, bullshit. They don't stink. <laughs> on they just don't smell themselves. Can we talk about deodorant for a sec? Yeah. Because um, my boy came to me and he was sort of um, 
his I guess his teacher had said, oh, you guys are smelly in there because they're year five, sixes and um, you should all wear deodorant. So he said, oh, mum, what's, you know, uh, maybe I should like wear deodorant because my teacher said we should all. But he's not, he does not smell. He doesn't have any hair under his arms. So, um, but what I had thought is when he does, what type of deodorant to get him because. Roll on. Right. Yeah, so, roll on. Yeah, so I was thinking roll on because I feel like spray is, but let's see, you use spray still, but it's number one, bad for the environment, but number two, you inhale it, right? And that can't be good for you to be inhaling that. Mm. So would roll on be better? But then you've got stuff like the no pong, which is like the organic stuff, which is apparently really good. No cool. pong? Yeah. No pong. You pong yeah, but you know the no pong? No, no, it's like it, an, it, it, The problem with the no What's wrong the problem with the, the no pong is you're still quite pongy after you use it. <laughs> you silly well, man. <laughs> there's that. There's, you just like use a tiny bit, and it's more it looks like a maybe like a wax or a creamy type thing, and then. Oh, you is that Cisco's brain? Pong a pong pong pong. No, it'll be. <laughs> it'll be no tong. It sounds. It sounds uncomfortable. No, it's all right. Like no, a no, waxy it's, gel stuff. No, no it's such a I small think it's amount. Like, yeah. Like we we got a um, sample of this one called Lavalin, sim- similar it type thing. Oh, it did for me. It didn't work. It for works me. For up to a week. It works for about four days. I'm a manly man. It didn't work for me. <laughs> no. So deodorant's one of those things as well. Like for me, like you were talking Dev about not realizing how much you sweat. I forget to put on deodorant now, like very regular, because I didn't put it on when I wasn't leaving the house. What was I putting deodorant on for? Yeah. So I went like a year and a half without wearing deodorant. Yeah. Now. It's Poor so Julie. far out of my mind. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I just forget. put it on straight away after a shower. I don't. Sometimes I forget. I just wonder how many people in suits. When you, you see people in suits, right? Um, I'm, I'm sweating up a storm. Yeah, but how many people... I can't take the jacket off because it's wet. Yeah, but how many people in the office have wet underarms? How would you know? Everyone. 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 Because everyone... It's a hot day. No one's taking the jacket off. There's a reason they're not taking the jacket but off. But then everyone. But then it's the most impractical outfit ever. <laughs> the the thing is, like, everyone's got it. But then, like, do you judge someone that has sweaty armpits? Do you think it's embarrassing for them? Did I did I tell no, no, you about? Was, you don't start taking jacket off. <laughs> did I tell you about my business meeting? <laughs> yeah, no. When I, 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 see. I was super sweaty. Hmm. So this was in my last <laughs> job, and this was my first, what's it called? Like, first um, meeting with the director. Like I went to an, one of our clients and met the director of the business. And it was the first time I had to do this, and I took one of our new guys with us. So I'm nervous, as it is, but it's also the hottest day of the year. This place is about a 15-minute walk, and we're in London. So the choice is... Do you walk there in the heat or do you get on the even hotter underground packed full of people? <laughs> so I walked. I think this is I think this is one of those situations where you're screwed if you do and you're screwed if you don't. <laughs> That's how I felt. So I walked there. And when we got there, met met him. They well, his assistant had us like sit in a room and wait for him. Actually, no, no, no. This this made it worse. Sorry, I forgot. We met with his, like a someone under him first, and they took us out onto their little veranda outside because it was a nice day. Oh. So I sweated even more outside. <laughs> is is your jacket then, on? You've got your jacket on the whole time, right? Off, off, off. Oh, off. You, you can't sit you, down. You, with you it can't on. take it off. You can't so, take it off at this point because he's just, he is covered. His shirt's so got then, a different color. It's so got, then we got the color sweat. <laughs> So then we went inside. The assistant took us into a room to wait for the director who was finishing up a call. And then he came in. And I just remember I stood up. Now, my whole back is drenched. He can't see my back. That's okay. But I decided to the point that halfway down <laughs> the front of my shirt, like the whole midriff was just drenched in sweat too. <laughs> and I remember I just stood up, shook his hand, and I was like, I'm sorry about this. It's a hot day and stuff. <laughs> he's like, oh no, don't worry. He's actually really cool about it. He's like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. But you know, obviously, the gremlins in your head are, s- are screaming at you, like, ah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sweaty boy. 
<laughs> so I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I with guys, that's why I think that's normal. But maybe it's because I've been around sporty people all my life. But yeah, it doesn't even. I don't flinch an eyelid if someone's got sweaty armpits. I mean, own. you're in a you're in a suit. You're in a, like a, an attire that you're supposed to be. Like you know, it's it's a formal thing. Like not formal, but it's like you know, professional. Yeah. And then CJ, you know CJ, CJ yeah. covers it by wearing a jacket, right? I remember going out with a collared shirt, and before I even got to the club, I'm sweating. My, like my yeah. my uh, routine to go to the club is to have the windows down, even if it's cold, to let the air up my sleeve. So they can like cool my, you know, you know what I mean? And then I would have um, pads inside my shirt to capture the sweat. Like I use so many things. And then I think about it, I go, everyone's sweating. Mm -hmm. Everyone's sweating. I don't understand why like we always try to hide the sweat when everyone sweats. Yeah. The worst thing is um, sweat, butt crack sweat when you stood up from the chair. (laughs) What? Oh, I, I I leave a bit of butt crack sweat. <laughs> yep. Are you talking on your trousers? Like so, if not the chair. The worst place is <laughs> is like basketball or something. Like if you've been scoring and yeah. it's like so hot in the sports hall, like yeah. there's no there's no like you just, and then like you, you have to stand up for like the next team and you're like oh god, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, I just tucked my chair in and ran. It wasn't me. <laughs> Oh, <sighs> but yeah, sweating is um, uh, hyperhidrosis. Do you want to talk about your hyperhidrosis? Hyperhidrosis is um, excessive sweating, hereditary. I got it. I think my brother was lucky he didn't get it, but I've passed it on to my kids, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Um, I think I, I know I've definitely passed it on to one of them, but I think the other two also might have it. I think the first time I found out Emma had hypohidrosis was when I was holding her hand and her hand started to sweat and then she started to like, she started to pull away and I said, what's up? And she goes, I have hypohidrosis. I go, what's that? And she goes, it's excessive sweating. And I was like, where? And then she took her hand out and I grabbed it. I said, I don't care. And oh, then isn't she, that just love? <laughs> and she was like, no, no. And then she, she slowly took her hand away. I go, when you're comfortable, but I don't care. Right, and she's just like, oh, so like she felt comfortable straight away, didn't ya? Yeah, that's lovely. That's lovely. Um, yes, Siege. Um, excuse me, excuse me, Miss Emma. Yes. Um, do you sweat Mr. in Siege. your sleeping? Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so do I. Well, you probably might have it. A lot of I, actually people have it and don't realize. Yeah, a lot of people have. Um, it. I wake up with a wet shirt in winter. Oh, yeah. same here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, with hyperhidrosis, there's two. There's two um, different types. One, you are, it's like hereditary and you're born with it. And another, if you've had a some sort of disease, it can trigger it and then you might get it. Um, I had two operations for mine. Mine was originally just on my hands. Um, and this was okay. back in the day when I was a teenager and I had two operations. So one on each side and they sever the nerve. So they cut through your... Um, Water, your sweat ducts. They cut through your um, oh gosh, I've forgotten the name. Isn't Basically, it ducks. Uh, it's a. I don't think she has ducks in her body, bro. <laughs> no, it's um, it's called endoscopic quack, quack. thoracic sympathectomy. Oh, okay. So they cut through the sympathetic <laughs> nerve. Sorry, that was what I was saying. Oh, the sympathetic um, nerve. But at the time, what, what they didn't realize, or they failed to tell us is it can cause sweat in long-term areas. issues called compensatory sweating and a lot of other issues um, throughout your nervous system because they've cut through your sympathetic nerves on each side. Yes, yeah, so it's, it's quite um, important. Well, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> to the point now where this particular surgery that I had has been banned in more countries that it hasn't. So it's banned, uh, it's been banned like nearly worldwide yeah. because of these side effects. But unfortunately I had it. So it was absolutely great for the first maybe four years. Um, I had my surgeries one year apart. So for a year when I'd play sport, 
I would have a literal symmetrical line yes. down my face where one side this. was red and sweaty really? and the other side was just my normal skin color. Wow. So after my game, this. it was literally half of my body that had been operated on, like that side was fine. And the other wasn't, yeah, it was the most bizarre thing. And then I had the other surgery. So it was all like, it was the best. I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Because I used to be able to fill a cup of water with sweat yeah, from my yeah. hand. So throughout school, I'd have to carry a tea towel with me because I would sweat through the page. Like it was so bad. Um, so this was like a godsend. And then it lasted for about, yeah, about four years. And then I started to get compensatory sweating. So what was just an issue with my hands then just basically turned to like full body. And it just got worse as the years got on and the older I got. Um, and but I've there's had, a lot of people that have um hypohydrosis, yeah. So I'm part so, of okay. like groups, and there's lots that, of people that have it that don't realize as well, yeah. yeah. That raises a question because when you said it, that, I'm a sweaty little man, yeah. You when you know. said that, it made me wonder this is something that if you have excessive sweating, and a lot of people have it. So what's excessive? Like, what if the people that have it, like yourself, are just normal and we're under hydrosis? <laughs> I guess it's the proportion <laughs> of people. I'm so <laughs> I guess when it starts affecting, like the proportion of people where it affects their daily life, where you are sweating for a purpose that isn't meant to be um, a physical reaction from your body, but your brain is telling your body that you should be sweating right now. Oh, so I can sweat tip. on a cold day I sweat on where cold I'm day. just doing nothing, you know, just yeah, um, but what if, sat down. What if your brain knows something that you don't? I don't know. It's part of, it's kind of linked to your flight or fight type thing, isn't All it? Right. And it's just, I have no idea, Zanzi. You could be right. And it could be one of those lactose intolerant things where actually those people are the normal people and the people that can consume lactose are, the, <laughs> are actually the minority. What? And I, <laughs> what? I also your, wonder, I also wonder if you had your surgery too early and you prevented yourself from becoming a superhero. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> We're, I'm part of this yeah, but- group where we have, uh, like people come on to say, I really want the ETS surgery and we really try and turn, like, turn them off having it because it's such short-term um, benefits, but the long-term effects is awful. I have Botox now every four months on my underarms, which has been amazing. And I take tablets to does help that, with mine. Does that work? Yeah, for your underarms. And I see a um, no. rheumatologist who does it and I only pay... A very small, like eighty dollars, basically. Okay. Um. And the tablets you're taking are they salt tablets at all? No. No. Okay. Um. I was, uh, my mom told me to take salt tablets. No, I'll I'm let you know what I take, and you can look into it further, Siege. Yeah, but I, I don't mind being sweaty. Yeah. Someone yeah. doesn't like it. They can slip. Or, they can slip and slide away from me. <laughs> But yeah, I think my kids. Unfor- that's the sad part is that I think my kids have it, but luckily, oh, they're luckily they're boys, and I feel like it's just more acceptable on boys. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. But you, um, is you cope with that- it during? Yeah. No, I don't really cope very well with it. It's actually one of those things that is affects my everyday life. Really? Yeah. You know that. Hmm. But so it is what it I, is. I I call I call. I call mine running, my body runs hot. I just read that at 37 degrees Celsius, that's when your body will start to sweat. That's when homeostasis. You're cool. Yeah. What was that? Homeostasis. St- stamiostasis? Homeo. Ho- homeostasis. So your body, like a lot, shivering, sweating, these are all responses to bring you back to a home to your homeostasis your your sort of body zen point is where you're supposed to be so yeah so that's yeah okay so anything under that which is do you know what that temp is 30 that it's 30, 37 well it's between 37 is your yeah. so but like what's the um like the give and give or take so it shouldn't be under 36 i'm usually around 36.1 um, shouldn't be under thirty six, and it shouldn't be really over thirty eight. Should what, be under. What's 38. high temp when we? What's oh, high... like anything over thirty eight is considered like a fever. But um, wow, a high, 
our temp is like give or take less than a degree. Yes. Wow, we are we are useless. High temperature would be useless. like thirty nine, and really should it's quite it's very high at forty. So, so how about can people have a lower uh, a higher um, semiostasis? Homeostasis. Homeostasis. <laughs> Can they have like a... I think it's pretty natural for everyone to be within the range of 36 to 37. I'm just something. thinking the people that don't sweat, is it because their homeostasis is higher? I think it'll just be a genetic thing. I'm not sure. Oh, it's a genetic thing. Just in general, thing. like their, their response to... Mm increased temperatures or whatever they just don't sweat as much or maybe maybe they do sweat but they just don't release as much sweat so it's less noticeable mm-hmm. now, now, now i got another question for emma mm. yes during winter are you able are you able to wear shorts and a t-shirt um no she feels the cold she shivers oh i oh, still damn. get cold she still gets cold yeah i still get cold i i sleep hot though i'm a hot sleeper so am I. Like the boys, or everyone calls me like a radiator because I get very hot. Yeah, extremely hot. <laughs> but it's too hot. But I, I still get cold, like in general, like really easy. I'm like, I have to like rug up and stuff. I could be sweating, but be freezing. If you know what I mean. I don't rug up. So you stay warm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm always hot. Is there anything else about uh, hydro, hydro hypnosis, and hypnosis that you want to talk about? The weird thing about it is that it turns into a psychological thing where you can just think about sweating and you will start sweating. Yeah. I'm sweating now. Yeah. That's weird. And so then it sort of manif- it continues to sort of exacerbate the problem as well. No, see... I always thought it was my anxiety because I've been in the shops, right? Like getting my like, like sh- buying new shoes, and next thing I just start sweating, mm. like ah, oh, freaking anxiety again. Bloody yeah, it's the better of me. Anxiety, anxiety. Damn you, anxiety! <laughs> Damn you, the head. You got me again. Um, yeah, right. So it becomes more of a mental battle than. And it's physical. both, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's genetic, but your then your psyche takes over as well because you know something's going to happen most likely, and then you're anticipating, and then yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. It's all very interesting. It is. It, in that Facebook group, what what are what are things that people do? People are there to support each other. Some people are very at the point where they're considering like committing suicide. Yeah. And stuff like that. Um, but people are always, and it does happen because, as I said, it affects people's daily lives. Like, so it's uh, there's different places that you could sweat as well, right? So there's like, like planter, palmer, like there's um, people that sweat on their faces and their heads. Like, I don't get that as much, but some people really sweat on their heads mm. and they can't meet a girl, they don't, or they can't meet a boy. They have extremely low self esteem, they have all these things. Mm. and yeah. This Very doesn't sad. sound like a healthy group to be in. No, it's not. It's actually, yeah. it is. I'm not saying everybody's like that, but people come in for support and then other people, um, the like, it's good because there's a lot of people that are up to date on newest research and newest um, ways to like overcome it. There's a really good one where it's the most sort of used one, but you, you put your hand in. And yeah, um, electrocute yourself. Yeah, in water with electric currents through it. And then that that helps, and all these different things. That, so they say what works for them, what you can try. They might be able to, depending where they are in the world, like link them up with um, good doctors that they know in the area. Yeah. There's actually a try. Like we're in, the group has discovered there's a doctor in. I think they're in Japan. Are they, uh, I don't know where they are. I think they're in Japan. It's a Japanese doctor, maybe or Hong Kong, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, they are the first doctors in the world to trial the reversal of that surgery that I had. Yeah. So what that, what it, does that mean? Ooh. You'll start sweating in that same spot again? So it might bring the, back your original sweating, but they've only operated on about three people and they're keeping all the data. Oh, that's very early. It's extremely early, yeah. So all these people are in the yeah. group. Um, 
and um, they believe that I they wonder. I wonder how way. many people are undiagnosed hypohidrosis. I think many, many, I many, could be, many, many. I'm, I'm, I'm sweaty as hell. I'm sweaty. I'm sweaty as I hell. I think you have it on your underarms. Now you said it, I'm denying it. <laughs> <laughs> out of pure, out of pure uh, stubbornness. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wonder I wonder like with all these stuff like so you said you got hyperhidrosis and then there's people that have psoriasis and then there's people that have other things mm-hmm. the, there's no one that's like um like perfect right normal is a myth <gasps> You, I see some. What, what I that? see some people. I go, oh, they've got nothing wrong with them, but maybe they do, and you just don't do. know it. Yeah. What was that, Alexander? Normal. Normal, normal is a myth. And normal is a myth. Yes. I thought you said normalization. I was like, what? What are we normalizing? <laughs> normal is a myth. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Normal you, definitely. Did is you know a myth. what's normal? What? Having something is normal. Having nothing is abnormal. Really. Having nothing is abnormal. Um, but yeah. So I'm always here for you, Em. Oh, what cute. No, I'm going bad today, I tell you. Uh, I don't mind talking yeah, about uh, it, to be honest, because uh, it is what it is. But you, know. you know what? Um, <laughs> what is a topic that is that interests women? Wedding rings that don't come off fingers. Maybe we should do the experiment live here. What, cut it? No, use the the fireman's, there was like these ways. So Emma posted her wedding ring, right, and and yeah. uh, to this group and asked this group um, solutions to taking off her wedding ring off her finger because her fingers got fatter, but the ring <laughs> stayed on and she didn't take decide to take it off before she can't, like, she's not able to remove the ring anymore. <laughs> Because it's stuck. It's, it's stuck. Isn't it, that gives isn't me it just soap? so soap much water? anxiety. Like my claustrophobia <laughs> so, is screaming. I'm going to send you a picture. This is what I sent the Wait, woman. wait. Can you just tell the boys? Yeah, send the picture, but also send the uh, the comments. Uh, can you read the comments that like people have said? Oh, did this I divide mean, people? No, no. No. They're all like they're all helpful, giving suggestions. Um, um, some are quite... They invested and want to know the outcome. They're invested into what's happening. <laughs> one one person said, "Go to the fire station now and cut that off." <laughs> so people are really worried now. Some people are quite worried, um, it, but others. Is okay, it not possible so that it's just going to like kill your finger? Yeah, I think so. So I need to I like let you know. Fact, is- I like the fact that you're not worried about Emma. Like, but have you considered the the possibility you might have to live the rest of your life with nine and a half fingers? No. So, oh my gosh, she said it like that. Um, that that nursery rhyme. Nine and a half fingers on the wall. Nine and a half fingers on the wall. <laughs> oh, so, a wedding ring. I'm not sure about you, but there's there's no nine and a half fingers on the wall, mate. <laughs> Where is the nursery rhyme? If there was, it'd be quite it'd be quite no, scary. It wasn't nursery rhyme. It was uh, beer bottles on the wall. Oh, yeah, okay. Remember that song? 99 bottles of beer. Yeah. Yeah, 99 bottles of beer on the wall, 99 bottles of beer. So basically, um, it doesn't hurt. It's been like this for years. Um, So, okay. Context, when I got married at 21, I was 55 kilos. I am now not 21. And I'm neither 55 kilos. (laughs) uh, 12, 13 (laughs) years later, maybe 13. I don't know. And I can't believe how slender your fingers were. And I'm not 55 kilos anymore. I'm a bit over 90. So what happened is <laughs> the ring <laughs> got a bit stuck, <laughs> but it actually doesn't hurt. What happened is it created like an indent and then the rest of the finger just got big and the indent stayed the same. <laughs> I can actually move the ring around, but I just can't get it up anywhere. Like it won't move from its location. It just goes round. And... 
I actually did lose you some spin weight. You me right around. I, I lost a bit of weight <laughs> when I did Weight Watchers a few years back. And then for the first time, I was able to get it off again. But then I put a, a lot more weight back on and it's now stuck. Yeah. Again. So it sounds so all these like... Diff- yeah, well, that, you've already got the solution. That way, watch your stuff doesn't work. Well, they've given me all these women gave me yeah, these read, read some YouTube of the videos and and these ways to like get the ring off, which I have to now try. Um, failing that, uh, I'm gonna go get it cut off. But basically, don't so, read names. So everything, no, of course, you've already you've already had one successful solution to this before. Lose weight. Yes, except for now that sometimes I am slightly occasionally getting a bit concerned because it's quite indented all the time. But when I exercise or get really hot and my fingers swell more, yeah, <laughs> it's not so good. So I thought maybe I should actually, it needs to come off now. It definitely needs um, to come off. So there's yeah. one thing called... You know what it is? Ernie wanted to lock you in <laughs> and he found a way. I didn't even know. He's like, she, she, she's never taken that ring off. So Locked in. <laughs> There's one thing called the dental floss, the dental was floss thing, and um, or the what was that? It's the, the dental floss technique, I guess. Um, also known as I think the fireman's. Oh, look at that girl's one. The what fire- happened with that girl's one? Yeah, she got um, she put got put on weight as well. She had preeclampsia when she was pregnant. Um. So I had a look at this, uh, what did I say, floss, dental floss thing, and some people use a shoestring. Or You're like not feeling a shoestring there. Elastic thingy, and you you slip it under, so you slip one end of the dental floss under the ring, and then you wrap the dental floss around you, the rest of your hand so it constricts your finger. And then you go to the part that you slipped under and start unraveling it, and it apparently slips the ring off with it. No, no, let's not do that. So let's I watched some YouTube videos, and it worked on every single. Well, not, but then apparently there is a point of no return where that won't hurt, and it can be quite painful. Yeah, but I was thinking of testing it now. Why? But they said put your hand in like a freezer or something first, or a bucket of ice, because you want to like make it as cold as possible. Numb. Um, numb, but also you know shrink it if it's a bit swollen and i well, guess if you would put a hand in ice like an ice bucket wouldn't it like wrinkle and shit if you're there yeah, for a long period of time like maybe 10 minutes they reckon so someone else is now what the disturbing thing was um someone got bitten in their in their finger oh. the disturbing thing was is that this lady also had the same thing and she, 18 months later, she's still got a big indent where her ring was. So I think I'm just going to have this weird finger when I take it off, which is like normal and then indent that just stays forever. <laughs> it's, it I, think I was not concerned. Like when I brought this topic up, I wasn't concerned. But now I am concerned. <laughs> I'm more than concerned, and I think this is priority now to <laughs> to get rid of the ring. Do, do I do I need to come across with my tin snips and cut so this thing off? Let, I'm going to send you a uh, video yeah. of, of of one of these firemen's thing, and you can play it so you see what it looks like. So this is a doctor. Mm-hmm. But ooh, she cute. <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. All right. What? She's attractive. What do you want me to say? How <laughs> to remove? A ring stuck on your finger. Such as mine. Hi everyone. Wouldn't mind getting a ring stuck on her finger. Something a little different. As many of you know, I'm currently doing my OA rotation. You can skip through this bit. She's just saying what she has to do. Here we go. The next thing I'll discuss is using a ring cutter. If there's any signs of ischemia as discussed Now, apparently you just go to the fire station and they will have these ring cutter things. Or special jewelry cutters. It's a Leatherman. There's also an electrical ring cutter that many emergency departments carry. Ooh, That's one that yeah, terrifies me. That would terrify me too. Yeah, that one. That, yeah, that one I don't like. Mm-hmm. Too far. You need stitches. Yeah. Metal guard that you can use. So you want to plate up the metal. And I, I don't like that she's doing this. If I'm honest, because I don't think this is something you should ever do after watching a YouTube video. 
<laughs> no, she's <laughs> <laughs> because you know what you're right, Alexander. Because usually you're drunk. Because uh, because <laughs> usually you'd come up to a party and you go, oh look, my ring's stuck on my finger. Yeah, I can get that off. You but four she said balls, it's a you're special in. device they have in hospitals. Anyway, continue. In hospitals, I can get that from Bunnings. That yeah, so anyone can yeah. get one of those. But she said you need a metal guard. Metal guard? To put under that's the ring. That's just a perspex. A thin perspex. <laughs> yeah. So once you hit the perspex, you go, that's it. That's as far as you go. It's just like a warning. A oh, warning. Right. Uh, you want to do that? No, yeah. I don't. Because you'll need stitches. <laughs> I reckon we get dead snips and, and I cut it straight off. Right, this is the one. Oxygen mask being used as well. To perform this technique, um, place one of the suture or string under oh. the ring and tightly wrap the string around the finger. As a reminder, this isn't the most comfortable procedure, so make sure your patient is properly anesthetized. Continue wrapping the material until the end of the digit and make sure there's no tissue visible between the strings. When you're done wrapping, start pulling the proximal end of the string in a circular manner until the ring is removed. The idea here is to wrap the finger tight enough to bring down the swelling so the ring can come off. Lastly, That's what I was going to try. Nah. You can use this technique even if there is an open wound of the digit. To perform this technique, cut one finger of the sterile glove off to form a thin sleeve. Place <laughs> one I thought the glove was an example hand. I was like, what are they doing? <laughs> I was gonna try Those that one too. Have for removing a ring. After removal, always clean the finger thoroughly and use an antibiotic. Should I try the glove one? Like yeah. you know what, Em? Why don't like you go? If, if you if you want my wife, I'm more than happy to do any of these techniques on someone else. <laughs> but the but the cute girl on YouTube said it works. <laughs> why? Yeah. Why don't it's why don't you go to like? People who do like, I'm sure there are people who do this. Like, there's a place you can it's, go. It's just too no, easy, Alexander. So, it's so just too only, easy. Jewelers used to do it a lot. There's well, a life, there are a couple life's about experimenting. in the area that still do it, but they cut it off. They don't. That's all they do. They will cut it off, and then if you want to keep the ring, they can resize it to make it bigger. As I say, don't um, you need it resized anyway. Yeah. Well, we were gonna get. I was gonna. This is. I wanted a new ring for my twentieth anniversary. So you see, so it's come to light now. This is exactly what she has purposely put on weight, put on weight, so that she could get a new ring. I. It finally came out. It's finally come the out. The master plan. The master plan. You know what I'm envisioning in my, in my head now. You stroking your uh, hairless cat and like, yeah, yeah. excellent. <laughs> Look, I mean, I could pay to get it resized, but then what's the point if I'm going to get a new one? I might just buy a what's fake one. one. Why are you assuming there's a new one? <laughs> Who said you're going to get a new one? <laughs> for my 20th <laughs> yeah. year, I'm assuming because I've been saying it for the past, like, at least Do six you know what years, Do you know what years. assume means? Make an ass out of you and me. Oh, make an ass out of you and me. <laughs> but, um... Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this lovingly. Me and your husband, because I'm also I, I, I'm also in this group. <laughs> you might give a couple of hints, right, <laughs> that you want something, and I think a few a few ladies need to understand this, and maybe a few ladies in the past. If you ever hear this, I was not trying to ignore you. I just didn't notice <laughs> that you were getting off a, a subtle hint saying you know hmm. he knows because we, we were twenty. <laughs> We were twenty one, and this um, and I'm looking at I'm looking at his face now. This is the first he's actually hearing no, of it. No, we were twenty one, <laughs> and we I picked this, didn't I? And it wasn't expensive because we didn't have much money. And I said, "Was like, that were we married yet, or yeah. was I still trying to marry you?" No, no. Oh, we weren't married yet. Uh, no, I uh, was engaged. <laughs> like because uh. that one came anyway. And then you know times change and. I grew up and then I'm like, oh, I quite like a different ring now. And, you know, not now, like for our 20th. It was always for the 20th, like, mm. you know, in the future. How far away is the 20th? Well, we're at... What are we at? 14. Oh, lucky. Lucky you knew. I think. <laughs> lucky you knew, right? Yeah, we're at 14. I was just testing you. So six more years. Less, well, yeah, six more. Oh, next year will be 15. March Yikes, in March will be fifteen. Years. So five more years, about five and a half years. And uh, that's it. Are we all good? Good on that side. Yeah. Good on this side. Yes. All right, that's another episode of the B side word done for another week. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. 
Uh, have a great week, guys. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Ciao. Peace. See ya. So, we stop at the recording. Stop the recording. We stop at the recording. But yeah, it was good.